Hey everybody and welcome to Bits of Board, where we're talking board games, miniatures, cards and dice. Uh, my name's Michael and today we're going to be checking out Thief's Market, which is uh, one of my most recent Kickstarter arrivals from TMG. Uh, it's all about outthinking, outwitting your opponents. Um, let's just dive in and check it out. Alrighty guys, so this is Thief's Market, and this is a game all about becoming, you guessed it, the King of Thieves. They've even got a card for it, which is wonderful. Now, uh, the way that you become the King of Thieves is by building up your notoriety, which are these sort of victory point tokens here. And the way that you do that is by buying items from the marketplace. There's three marketplace decks, uh, the A, B, and C. Once the A one runs out, we start running the B deck. Once the B deck starts running out, we run the C deck there. The theme of the game is you've come back from a heist with all of your thief buddies, and this is the loot that you've brought back. The idea is that each player in the game has to figure out what their fair share of the loot is. Um, so we've got a four player game built up here and each player has uh, one gold at their disposal. Now um, gold when it comes to buying cards from the marketplace is a wild card. It, uh, it counts as any of the costs. Now the costs you can see on the cards in the left hand side. So this one here costs two green, two white, two red, one green and one green. So if you manage to score that in your final breakup of the loot, you could potentially buy it. Now there's also a first player token that's added to this just for another little thing that you can bargain for. So let's uh, let's go through. So player one over here, he's, uh, he's pretty keen on buying the ruby set here, which is the alchemical lab. Now what this does is, let's have a quick look at it, it costs two ruby, but in for the rest of the game, the player could use a ruby dice and change it into any of the other colored dice or colored gems. So it's a really handy card. It really helps to give you a flexible strategy throughout the game. Unfortunately, there aren't two ruby dice out there. So what he's going to do is he's going to say, all right, well, I definitely want that ruby dice, but I'm also going to take these two gold dice. And what they do at the end of the turn is they give him two more gold or two more wild cards to play with. So he's gonna see, that's, he's thinking that's a good idea. Uh, player two, they've got their eye on the necklace card here, which essentially just gives them two victory points come the end of the game. Very nice to start building up victory points. Um, so he's thinking, yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna take the two diamonds there and I'm gonna take a notoriety dice, which gives them more victory points for uh, at the end of the turn. So they grab one of the tokens. The next player, player three, he's looking around and he's like, ooh, I'm gonna try and uh, get the pawnbroker over here. Now that's gonna be able to change green dice into gold dice, which is very cool. So he's gonna take all three because he wants to potentially buy this and then change the remaining dice to a gold, so that's a pretty good idea. Now the fourth player is left with a choice. Actually, any of the players throughout the game have this choice, but they can choose to take a pile of dice from one of the other players because they might not think that what's left on the table is a good cut of the loot. Player four decides that this is a wonderful deal for him and decides to take it along with the first player token. Now this is crucial and in a real life game probably wouldn't have been left this far to be taken. But because he's taken the uh, first player token, he gets to go first when choosing the cards from the marketplace. And if you play, if you can see ahead, you're just gonna find out that this player two over here is uh, a bit out of luck. So going first, player four is going to play a diamond card and a gold card. He's gonna throw that gold back into the pile and he's going to take the necklace, which player two was after, and then play moves on to the next player. Player one gets his go now and he's finally okay with it. He's gonna play his ruby and his wild card gold coin to take the alchemical lab. Player two then goes and yep, he's out of luck. The card that he was going to buy, the one that he was aiming for, got snapped up by another player. So he's pretty much stuffed there. So puts those uh, white cubes back in the middle, unable to do anything with them. He's just gonna have to settle for that victory point. Now, player three here has got a bit of a choice. He can purchase, at the moment, 
any one of these cards, and only one. And I think he's going to go the Pawnbroker, which was the initial deal. He's going to put in two emeralds there to pay for it, and then he's going to pay a third emerald um, to activate the power on his Pawnbroker card by changing the dice into a, where is it, gold dice. So once players have done their purchasing for the round, um, they cash in their other faces. So this guy here gets two victory points. This guy here gets another gold. Old mate over here only gets one victory point, but now he's, uh, he's after revenge, let's call it that. And the first player, he gets two gold coins there. That round is over, and we refill the marketplace with the A cards. Once we're unable to refill the A card slot fully, so if, say we only get four cards out, we do an entire row of B cards to complement it. And that's pretty much the gist of how the game works. Every turn, um, the player who ends up with the first player token will re-roll all the dice and place the token back into the pool, and then they will go first in picking their uh, fair share of the loot based on the new cards out there. Early on in the game, it's a really, it's a good strategy to make your tableau as flexible as possible by sort of buying cards from the marketplace that turn dice facings into other facings, because that means that you're not really going to get stuck in a game. Um, once you get to the B stage, um, you're sp you're still going to be getting a lot of tricky little cards, but there's a lot more victory point based cards in there. As soon as you get to C, that is your game winning deck. These are the ones that are uber powerful and a lot of the time quite costly. And that's where those uh, really flexible cards come into play. So I think for early plays through of the game, the idea is flexibility and then cashing out. <laughs> So the game comes with a very nice uh, player aid for each player, and uh, it includes the, the basic setup for the game, I guess. Um, now, it also includes down here just some extra end game scoring things. Uh, for example, if you have the most henchman cards, so they're cards with the, um, the henchman uh, symbol in the top left, then you're actually going to get uh, three points for that. Uh, runners up will get one point. And then the person with the most money at the end of the game will ha get uh, three victory points as well. And they're all things to bear in mind in addition to the powers on the cards. Now on the back of the player aid, you've actually got a, a key to the symbology on the cards, which is really definitely useful for some of the early cards. Um, so here you can see, uh, flip one of your dice of this type to choose one of these options. Wonderful. Very, very easy to read. When you get to some of the more complicated ones, it gets a little bit tricky. Um, so for example, this one, the heist, um, this is, <laughs> let's see if I can do this justice. When you purchase this card, then at the same time, gain this, do gain something this number of times. So it means you can gain this, do... Anyway, it's a little bit more complicated come the end of the game. So that's where the rule sheet comes in handy. Um, so we've got, you know, here's your everything you need to learn how to play the game. And on the back of it is a detailed description of how every single card in this game works. And this is so useful because every single card in this game is unique. There's no way you can go off and just remember all of them in your first couple of games. So yeah, that uh, that sheet is extremely useful and a very good addition. All right, so that's, uh, that's the game. I don't know if I said it, but the idea is to get as many victory points to win the game. I think we're all over that now. Um, yeah, let's have a look at what I thought. All right, um, no surprises here. I am a really big fan of this game and it might have something to do with the group that I first played it with. First impressions last with games like these, and I think, yeah, it really helped that these guys, they didn't take themselves too seriously. They didn't mind if they were getting the bung end of the deals. They just enjoyed the experience of the game, and I think that's where this one's a winner. It feels good, you know, you're being a bit sneaky, pushing your luck a little bit with your opponents, trying to take the uh, the best deals, but sometimes you got that guy who won't have a single bar of it, and they're like, nah, I see what you're doing there. Give me your pile, I'm not gonna let you do that. And it's a lot of fun. It's silly fun. And it, it's got a nice, it's got a competitive edge. Definitely got a competitive edge. And if you don't like that direct conflict where, yeah, someone's going to be stealing away your best laid plans. But um, honestly, if you don't mind that and if you can take it lightheartedly, there is a wealth of game in this one. And it is a blast. Um, 
Now I touched on the card powers and um, some of them look crazy. Um, I'm not sure if some of them might be game breaking at this stage, but we'll see. At the moment, I think everything's about fair. But um, like I said, the back of that rule book where it just explains everything in every detail for you is so handy when you're teaching this game. Now this game's got heaps working for it. It's really easy to set up. It's really bring to any table. In fact, the box is this big and you've got so much game in there. Um, it's fun, it's colorful, the art style's great. Working against it, I think, is that competitive, like it's very in your face competitive. And if you don't like that, you're probably not gonna like the game. But if you don't mind it, or you're willing to give it a try with the right people, then this is definitely a good go. Um, I really like the addition of the King of Thieves cards. I don't know if you can see that there, but on the back it's got uh, social media instructions complete with hashtags. Um, and so if you're going to be the winner, you're going to be the winner across the globe. And I think that's kind of cool. It's a neat little addition and it just adds to, you know, <laughs> it's not insult to injury because you won the game, but because you won the game, you got to pose with this card for any social. Anyway, it, I, I think it's a very cool addition. So I'm very much looking forward to getting this one to the table again. And I think my group are as well. So let's uh, keep this one on the top of the pile. Um, go check it out if you haven't had a chance to. And if you know someone who's got it, definitely hit him up for a play. So yeah, that's probably all I got for you today on that one. So the verdict is, if you like sneaky, take that dice chucking games, Thief Market is definitely going to be for you. A whole lot of fun in a little box. So that's probably all I got for you for the moment. Um, if you got any questions or anything like that, chuck them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. So till next time guys, uh, my name's Michael, this is Bits of Board. Thanks for watching.